Hi. I want to talk about John Keats, the subject of discussion thread number four. Keats is arguably one of the finest poets in English. He, again, is another one of those poets who died young, arguably perhaps because he knew he was likely to die young, that maybe contributes somewhat to the intensity of his poetry. You're being asked to look at the odes. It's only a small number of them. Five. So as we look at these odes, I want you to pick one of them and really examine how Keats created his meaning. In order to do that, though, we have to talk about something called negative capability. In our textbook, he writes to George and Thomas Keats, Dear brothers, no, I won't read the first part. It's a little embarrassing. But he starts talking about art. He says, the excellence of every art is its intensity, capable of making all disagreeables evaporate from their being in close relationship with beauty and truth. And then later on in the same letter, he says, I had not a dispute, but a disquisition with Dilke on various subjects. Several things dovetailed in my mind, and at once it struck me what quality went to form a man of achievement, especially in literature, and which Shakespeare possessed so enormously, I mean negative capability, that is when man is capable of being in uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, without any irritable reaching after fact and reason. This expression, negative capability, has been much discussed. Other writers have talked about similar ideas. Hemingway, for example, talked about the genius being able to hold two contradictory ideas in the mind at the same time without attempting to resolve them. Virginia Woolf talked about a similar idea as well. It's very much connected with the art for art's sake movement that comes much later. But the idea that art should not be pushing you to one side or the other. And in fact, with Keats, he writes in a way that tries, very repeatedly tries, to look at an area where we do not have reason and fact. This may be one reason why he often writes about dreams or uncertainties, that kind of little sort of consciousness between being asleep and awake, reveries. You notice also in Keats his use of paradoxes, pleasant pain. Right? or you might call them oxymorons. He puts opposites together often to try again to sort of create a world where this is suspended, where we're not saying, okay, it's all black or it's all white. It's all this or it's all that. He wants us to feel. He wants us to experience beauty, art, truth, and this is what I want you to examine in one of his odes.